All right. Um, hello, everybody. It's been quite some time since I've made a video. Um, I, I made a couple of videos for my classes, but, you know, a public video. Um, and this video uh, will hopefully address a couple of things. One, uh, it's a, on one hand, it's an Emacs video because I'll be showing you an Emacs workflow, my new uh, grading workflow. Um, and on the teaching side, um, it'll be my workflow and it'll be some non GitHub stuff. Um, and so um, if you are a teacher and not an Emacs user, I'd love to hear about your grading workflow. Uh, can you do stuff like this? Can you do it better with some other tools? If so, I'd love the suggestions. Um, am I missing something in the things that I find difficult? Um, obviously, if you're an Emacs user, similarly, um, you know, am I missing something, etc. Um, so as I said, I haven't made videos in a long time. Um, mostly, well, it's for a few reasons. One, um, to be quite honest, a lot of it's been, I've just been really burned out recently. Um, you know, feeling, um, I also haven't, you know, like part of that is I haven't explored new Emacs features, um, but, but really between, um, you know, between the whole, you know, the whole um, COVID situation that we've all been dealing with, um, combined with just too much, um, you know, stuff at work that that's just not, not uh, that, you know, there's a lot of good at work too, but just a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff weighing on me. Um, I've just got a lot of burnout, so I just haven't felt the joy in, um, in any of this. Um, you know, the good news is I'm 50, uh, I'll be 54 in a couple of weeks, so one year before, if I want to, if it doesn't improve, I can retire. Um, but hopefully the joy will come back. Um, so I'm hoping that this video will kind of uh, kickstart me a little bit, um, but, but we'll, we'll see in terms of, in terms of the making videos thing. Um, so uh, for the quick Emacs side update, um, I have been exploring some new packages. So I kind of did a, um, a semi-config bankruptcy and um, and started rebuilding things. And I'm now playing with Vertico and Embark and Consult, as you'll see today, um, and a few other things that I've simplified. Um, but you know that'll be for another story. So let's talk about grading workflow. So the first thing is um, I use GitHub Classroom um, for for most of my assignments in my classes, but regardless of the class. And GitHub Classroom is really nice because, well, a GitHub repository just in and of itself is really nice for sharing information with students because, you know, it's kind of like a website, but you can easily put things to it. it again, it's just really worked well for me. Um, but GitHub Classroom adds to that that it's great for the distribution and collection of materials. What you do is you make a classroom. So these are my classrooms. And then you make an assignment. So here in my 135 class, which is my CS1, um, each week there's a lab. And a lab is basically, um, you know, it's a programming assignment. But in here, you basically get a GitHub repo with starter code. They accept the assignment. They clone the repo. They work on it. They push it back to GitHub and it's all contained within GitHub. And so I do that for some classes, I'll do per assignment, but then for other classes like here, 127, which is CS0, I have them grab the assignment once, and this assignment, is that's all they're using for the entire semester, and they just put different directories in it, um, and that's part of the way I teach them Git over the course of time. Um, but they'll make like, they'll make uh, for project one, they'll make a directory for project one, push it up, et cetera, et cetera. And then here for my ethics class, uh, for my computer uh, science teacher thing, I have, I have the same thing over here. Um, and so if you go to an assignment, I'm gonna go to this dummy assignment here, um, just because it doesn't have student stuff in it. I, I just played with this. But when you click on an assignment, you basically get all the repos. So like there'll be like you have 30 students, you'll have 30 of these here. And then I'll do this in another tab. You can go to each of their repos here. Um, and this is fine and you can use the GitHub interface. You can look at things, you can go and deal with issues, you can deal with pull requests. Uh, you can clone the repo at which point you can bring it uh, to grade it. Um, I think you can load their like IDE for certain programming languages. Um, but, um, and it's nice, but it's kind of slow uh, because what I have to do then is click on each one, go to the site. If I want to open a file, I have to click on the file and then it may, I may have to download it or maybe it'll view in line. If I want to run their code, if there's code in it, I have to clone it. So it's a little bit of a, um, it's a nice interface, but 
it's clunky for grading a class set. Um, I use this interface, you know, when I'm just, uh, I just want to quickly, you know, when I'm on, I have a web browser up anyway, and a student sends me something, and I, want, I can, you know, I go to their repo and I poke around. Um, but, but it's clunky in terms of grading because of that slowness. And it's not, it's not GitHub Classroom that's clunky. It's just the web interface and the fact that you're you may be running a Python program or compiling C++, viewing a PDF and uh, yeah, too much going on. So they also give you this way to download projects um, using um, the Classroom Assistant. And I used to use that, but I don't really recommend that. Um, and the reason I don't recommend it, I'll go back to my classrooms here and we'll come back to it later, is um, I don't recommend it because it uh, it authenticates you with a um, with a token that expires, and um, so that way you can't use all like you can post you can clone it, but if you want to get an update like two months later to see if a student added something, or you want to send them feedback via GitHub via Git and GitHub um, two months later your token may have expired and then you have to clone it again and it's annoying. Um, so instead I do things a little differently, which I'll talk about now. So what I do is I go over to my machine and um, what I've done is I've collected my students' usernames. And actually, let me just go into my ethics repository here. Um, and I have at the bottom of this, so this is what a real class looks like. Um, I have my repository, so I'll go to my repository here so we'll look at it later. But the way GitHub works is you have the name of the assignment and it then puts the username, the GitHub username at the end. So I know what my students' assignments are going to look like. And so I use little scripts. So for example, um, I have these files with my 127 students GitHub names, with my 135 GitHub names, and with my ethics students GitHub names, and I write little scripts to do my clone, my, my, my cloning. So for example, this script clone.sh very simply does a, um, I type in a lab number and then it just loops through all of those GitHub repos. It pulls out their first name, their last name, their username, uh, their GitHub username, and then it does this git clone and it names it by their last name and their first name. And so then I get a folder with all of that. It's nice and neat and it's all in one directory. Um, likewise, I can later on, I can just go into a root directory and run this little script, which will update all the rec directories by doing a git pull. And so it just basically goes through all the directories, cd into it, git pull. I actually usually don't even um, run this as a script. I just kind of type the code um, and I just put in the script recently. I also usually use a while, um, a while loop instead of a for loop in the shell script so I can deal with any naming problems I have. But anyway, so I pull all the code down and that's where Emacs comes in. Um, because now if I wanted to, I could of course use like a file browser here and I can go to, God, there's too much stuff here, uh, sync. And this is already too slow. And I made this one here E2. Um, for ethics 2 and it's the ethics one that I renamed all the repos to student 0 etc except for mine uh, because I don't want to show you the students actual stuff I, I don't want to be able to you know, I, I, I want to respect that um, you know then I can click here and then I can like oh I you know but this is gonna have the same problem as using the github interface um, you know or maybe if I'm using an editor or, or an IDE like Thani, you know, it's like, oh, now I want to open that Python program in the, you know, so I got to find it. And, you know, you know this, this can be less than ideal. So, so here's the workflow. So I'm in Emacs, and what I do is I use Dired, the directory editor. And now all of a sudden, and I actually, I know some of you may notice that I'm, open, I'm upping the font on each window and I used to have it bound to update the, the font size on all, on everything. But as I said, I'm in the middle of rebuilding a simplified Emacs config from, from scratch, trying to get rid of the cruft that I don't use and I haven't moved that over yet. But the nice thing here is I get all my folders and usually these will be in, al these will be in alphabetical order by student, last name, first name. 
And at the same time, what I do is I have um, the spreadsheet up where I put the grades. That's the one thing I haven't moved into. Um, uh, in, you know, I should set up org mode for this so I can do it even quicker, but I haven't yet. And so some of the things I can do is I can just very quickly, oh, look, it's a student zero directory, student 11 directory. And I can navigate this. If I go into student zero, I can look here and there's an article PDF file and I can just hit it and it's right in there. On the other hand, or if I want to bring it up separately, and I normally won't do this, I'll use the embark package and it'll bring it up in the viewer. And I can do this with web links, or I can do this with art, you know, with PDFs. Uh, I can do this with um, docx files. But notice that I just stay in here. Oh, look at the article. And let's go over to here. There's no final project. This is a readme I provided, but I can look at this file. And because it's a text file, it reads it in line. And I can just quickly and easily or trivially navigate this, you know, and I can do this for each student, you know, um, and easily just move down the list just going bang 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 pulling out whatever i want and if i get to this case like here oh you know so um here i want to um grade a project and you know not much it just prints hello world but i can since i'm in emacs in my environment i can run python and then test the project and i'm just gonna kill this now and it's all in one place. And so it doesn't matter if it's a Java program, a C program, C++, Python. I can run it and use whatever tools I want here. Uh, likewise, if students give me a link to a file, which they might, I'm not going to poke too hard this, I think. Uh, this might have a link in it. Or it doesn't. Okay. I mean, you know, again, it's some some random student's work, and I guess the student didn't give me everything that they should. Uh, but that's okay. Um, but anyway, um, this is a really, really nice and efficient way of working um, because Emacs just lets me, you know, trivially navigate. And again, just to show the idea, if it's a PDF file, if I just hit enter, it just brings it up in in uh, in Emacs. And if I want to bring it out. There are a number of ways of doing this, but I'm using this new Embark package and I am bringing it up externally here. So um, again, PDFs, docx, program files, etc. But there are actually a few other things you can do. So another thing you can do, and there are again a few ways of doing this, I can use consult find and say, well, I want to get all the readme files. I'm just getting the readme files because there's a readme file in everything and they're mostly files that I made. And I can hit the S key, no, not the S key, the control, um, I bound the control dot the embark, and then capital S to put this into its own, its, you know, into a, um, into its own buffer. And now I can do, I can look at these files. Whoops. So for example, let's see, I, you know, this is all the readme files. Um, so if I want to look at my own readme file, I can do control.f, and that's my version of the readme file. Um, or I can go to this one, and this will be that student. You know, it's, um, I mean, it just has their name in it, so I knew there was nothing actually there. Um, but this gives me, and I can just get rid of these buffers, this lets me grab, if I want, all of the students' files of a certain name. So again, if I wanted to... Um, I think I gave them something, let's, let's say .py, and I can bring all of their Python programs. And you'll see here I gave one project, uh, Conway's Game of Life, uh, so I can say, let me get all of my students, and it wasn't a required project, it was just a recommendation, they could do a number of things, and I could pull out all of the students who put in Conway's Game of Life, and again I can then, sorry, put that into a buffer, and then I can just um, you know, deal with them all together. So it's a really, really nice, flexible workflow. And I never have to leave this one tool if I don't want, which makes it really fast and really efficient. Um, and I did something like this, a video for something like this, like a few years ago, how I did my um, 
the, the students who applied to my honors program using the PDF tools, um, but this is even more flexible. And so I wanna show you one last thing I can do with this. And so I'm gonna go into my directory here and we're in my directory here. And um, I can also use, and this is where more of the Git and GitHub stuff goes, where Emacs has um, the Git and the Git lets me really you know, I can look at the log, and so this will have the log of every commit. So over the course of the semester, um, this is going to, and I, you know, I could show you a more elaborate one, but I don't want to show the student stuff. Um, but it shows you all the changes, and I can say, oh, this is a change. You know, I can look at that or this one, um, and again, look at it via the commits. Um, so you could see all the changes to the code. You can also communicate with them via issues. So for example, I'm going to click on issues here just to bring it up. And um, we have this here, but let me make a new issue. And this is using, and I can do a control C, control N for this, but, um, but I never remember it. So let's create a new issue and um, demo issue for the video. And here's some feedback on the project, control C, control C. And I don't know if I have to push this or not. Um, no, I don't. So um, demo issue for video. Here's some feedback on the project. And what I could do here is um, if I wanted to, with an update, you know, I add something to it. Let's edit this with more info. And so this lets me, um, this basically lets me give information to my students or, or feedback to my students, again, right within Emacs here. So I could even say here, let's say forge post. So that'll be um, control C, control R, and uh, adding another comment to the thread, control C, control C. And I can add that there. Um, and you can do other things. And of course, uh, let's say, I don't know if, I think I'll have to pull it. Uh, if I do, it's like, this is what the student wrote. Um, and you'll notice here that um, I don't have, this is what the student wrote. But if I do uh, forge pull, I think forge pull should do it all. This is what the student wrote. So I can um, basically have all of this feedback mechanism and let's quit out of that, quit out of that. And we quit out of that. We're back to everything. And this, this is just another, this, you know, another one of the buffers. Um, but this gives me that ability. Um, and again, this will also work with pull requests. Um, this gives me the ability to do all of my evaluation and my grading. I'm in Emacs. You know, if I wanted to, um, I could use this in conjunction with my org mode stuff for notes, but I'm doing grades in the spreadsheet, so I haven't moved that over yet. Um, really, really nice workflow. I'm really, really happy with it. So um, if you're an Emacs user, I'm up for any other suggestions, comments, or whatever. Um, and if you're a teacher, I'd love to hear about your grading workflow, um, you know, and what you use to streamline things. And um, yeah, so that is it. Um, and uh, that's it for today. And have a great day.